cheat lines. This is an attacking concept that's easy to miss if you're just a casual viewer of rugby. But you might have wondered, how come the player that primarily distributes the ball seems to crop up on the score sheet so frequently? The answer? Support line, and more specifically, cheat lines. So what the hell is a cheat line? Well, watch this phase by South Africa. The scrum half, Faf de Klerk, distributes the ball, but then never takes a step backwards. Instead, he predicts where the player is going to be and starts moving straight there. This means that he is there to support and help gain those extra metres. You can see from this above angle just how far ahead of the ball he is, effectively cheating getting to where the ball is, rather than just simply following the play. In this example, it doesn't lead to a try, as opposed to this example with Gloucester. The scrum half gets quick ball from the first breakdown and identifies there's an overlap out wide, so arcs his run so he's in the perfect position to receive the pass and score a very easy try under the posts. To add this to your game, it's not just about blindly running an aggressive cheat line every phase, it's about reading the play and making a good prediction. The best way for a scrum half to bring this into their game is to focus on directly running sideways from a breakdown. This gives them the option to curve it around and turn it into a cheat line, but if there's a tackle at or behind the gain line, you're still close enough to support. Number two, defensive positioning. If you see my video about the pendulum defense, you'll be familiar with the idea of defending the backfield, ready for a kick. In that video, I show this animation, which doesn't actually tell you the full story. A gap will open up behind the defensive line when the defenders move forwards towards the attackers. This gap is the responsibility of the scrum half. This might be obvious for some, but is often overlooked. Not only does it stop short chips or grubber kicks, but it also helps the defence in many other ways. Firstly, the nine will be able to spot any areas that need more defenders in the line and then fill them to stop the easy tries for the attack. Also, by the scrum half being behind the line, they're able to follow the play and make cover tackles if the attack do manage to get around the side of the defence. And finally, with the scrum half in this position, you're given a second line of defence if there's any small breaks through the middle, so the nine can quickly snuff them out. Defensive positioning for a scrum half is very difficult to coach, as it's extremely dependent on the situation that's being faced. The core principles to follow in order of importance in something like this. Firstly, do I need to defend the fringes of the breakdown? If not, do I need to join the defensive line to plug any holes? And if not, then I should fall into the typical position, which would be about 5 to 10 metres behind the defensive line, following the ball across the field. In reality, it can end up being far more complicated than that. Number three, sniping. For those that don't know, sniping is where the scrum half picks up from the base of a ruck or a maul and then runs with it themselves. Any decent nine will be constantly looking for gaps near the breakdown and attacking the fringes anytime there's an opportunity. Even forwards can get in on the action. However, what I want to talk about is where sniping is against defenders. How a scrum half can use themselves to draw in players, cause a mismatch or generate an overlap. This is done by doing something that's typically avoided in rugby, running sideways with the ball. This can take a defender by surprise and if they're too slow to react, can lead to an easy line break for the scrum half. Alternatively, if a second defender is drawn in to tackle the nine, then a gap will likely open up and a simple offload will cause a big problem for the defence. This concept can be very simple, such as turning a one-on-one -on -one into a two-on-one -on -one by the nine simply picking up the ball and drawing the defender. Or it can be a bit more complicated by adding in switches to attack the gap left by the nine drawing the defenders across, or even working it into a pre-arranged move. Even if this sniping movement by the nine doesn't draw any mistakes out from the defense, what it can do is give the nine more time on the ball to make a better decision and pick the right option. To get sniping to work, the nine wants to force the defence into making a decision and then exploiting any gap they leave, even if that means getting flattened in the process. The core idea behind this is to attack the inside shoulder of the outside defender. Here the nine is focusing on the six. So as the nine runs across, if the six is too focused on the eight and comes up too fast, the nine can just easily go through this gap without a problem. If the three is too slow at getting across, so the six needs to help tackle the scrum half, the nine can simply offload the ball to the eight for them to go through the gap. Or, like we've seen before, the eight can run a switch behind the nine and exploit the newly created gap. 
So there's three ways to become a better scrum half. Cheat lines, defensive positioning and sniping. <laughs>